Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. In just a moment, I want to read a selection from Voices from the Past. Uh, these are Puritan devotional uh, readings, and uh, they're a collection of uh, uh, writings of a variety of different, mostly 17th century English Puritans. Uh, this one today by a man named Thomas Lee. Not all that well known, but he was uh, indeed uh, what they call an, uh, a nonconformist or a free church uh, preacher and pastor. And he's going to just reflect a little bit on Isaiah 26. Uh, verses three and four. I want to read for you. Uh, you the, speaking to the Lord, the prophet Isaiah saying this, you will keep in perfect peace um, him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Uh, Trust in the Lord forever, verse four says, for the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. Uh, quite a vote of confidence from Isaiah the prophet uh, and echoed uh, many centuries later here by Thomas Lee the Puritan in this reading from uh, Voices from the Past. Here's what Thomas Lee had to say. The Lord Jehovah should be the sole object of a believer's trust. In stormy and tempestuous seas, we must come to this rock for a refuge. When the sun burns hot, Jonah's gourd will prove insignificant. Of course, a reference reflecting back to the story of the prophet Jonah, the reluctant prophet, I should say. Um, uh, and so his gourd or the plant that he trusted in and hoped in would prove insignificant. There is no shadow like that of God's wings. So the shelter of the wings of the Lord. I love these images. They're very poetic, of course. Um, but they do reflect um, the, the comfort, the refuge, the safety we find in the Lord. Holy trust is an act of worship proper and peculiar to a holy God. Nothing in creation can share in it, for it would become our idol. Trust in God takes us off the hinges of of all other confidences. Even that is, you know, so so visual. You can just see how he's just he's just saying everything else. Uh, it, I mean, there's nothing in the same category as the Lord, you know, when it comes to ultimately being able to trust in the Lord. There's nothing, cre there's nothing in all of creation that's worth trusting. Trust in God takes us off the hinges of all other confidences. We cannot trust God and mammon. There must be but one string to the bow of our trust, and that is the Lord. And of course, remember, he's writing in the 17th century. And so for them, bow, bow and arrow, of course. And, um, and there's just this one. In other words, there's really just one string on your bow. There's one that you can trust, and it's God and God alone. He says we cannot trust God in mammon. And of course, the idea there is anything, any other commodity that you think you can draw resources from or trust in. Um, mammon could be money, could be lots of different things, but the idea is something human that you trust in. Um, you can't trust both God and mammon at the same time. Um, more particularly, we must not repose a holy trust in anything besides God, whether within us or without us. In other words, when it comes to your, your life, your spiritual life, when it comes to your salvation, um, your being reconciled before God, um, this holy trust can only be placed in God can't trust in yourself. There's a lot of people that think, oh, I just got to balance out the moral scales. I just got to be good enough for God to then owe me salvation. And we just are never that good. And Thomas Lee is making sure that we're reminded of that. And I appreciate that. That's the kind of proper diagnosis that can then lead us to what uh, uh, the proper uh, prescription might be or the proper um uh, uh, solution to our problem might be. We cannot lean on our own understanding. It will lead us into a bog. And that'd be like uh, quagmire, uh, you know, quicksand, uh, uh, a muddy, 
uh, area where you just, you know, you just end up spinning wheels. You can't get out of it. We cannot trust in our own heart. It is too deceitful. And he's quoting there from Jeremiah 17, 9, of course. The heart of man is deceitful. We delude ourselves. Nobody lies to me more than me. I'm often telling myself I'm better than I am. I'm often telling myself I'm worse than I am. And so he's right, uh, as he quotes the prophet Jeremiah there. We cannot trust in our own heart. It is too deceitful. He goes on. We cannot trust our bodily strength. Uh, the most brawny arm will utterly fail the assaults of death and sickness and aging and on and on the list goes. Um, uh, we cannot trust in the physical uh, body that we have. We can't trust our own heart. We've got we've, we've to gotta see the only trustworthy thing in the entire world. Uh, in the entirety of reality is God himself. The most brawny arm will utterly fail the assaults of death and sickness. Legs that now stand like pillars of brass will shortly appear um, what they really are, sinking pillars of molding clay. How Vi how visual can he be? He's amazing. This Tom, his name is Thomas Lee, 17th century Puritan, as I said, Englishman. And uh, just so poetic, so visual in his images there. We cannot trust in our natural acquired excellencies. They are altogether vanity. They're, they're empty. All of our excellencies cannot be trusted ultimately. That's what he's saying. There's nothing outside of us that we might trust either. Trusting in any part of creation is to feed on gravel. <laughs> I mean, just think about what do you have for lunch? What do you have for breakfast? Bowl of gravel. Um, and maybe some of your granola sometimes tastes like that. I don't know. But what he's basically saying is that there's no way you're going to nourish your soul, your spiritual life with any part of creation. We must not trust in the abundance of riches even in their fullest flow, they are most uncertain and will not profit in the day of wrath. In other words, when God comes to settle the score with everything that's wrong in the world, he comes to set things right. God's wrath, his righteous wrath, set against all that's wrong in this world. Um, uh, there's nothing that will be able to stand in God's day of wrath. Uh, except those, of course, who trust in Jesus, who took the wrath of God in our place for us. Uh, those trusting in riches can never expect a portion in heaven. Sooner the camel will pass through the eye of a needle than the rich through the gate of glory. Of course, he's reflecting back there on what Jesus said about that same thing, using that same metaphor. Also, trusting man is but a broken reed. That's... Oh, that's interesting. So something that is broken to begin with is, is going to prove itself to be untrustworthy. Man is dust, and with death our hopes perish. Ah, but saints can, uh, but saints can upon stable ground build their trust in God. Hmm. So man is dust, and with death our hopes will perish. Ah, but saints, those who will live eternally, can upon stable ground build their trust in God. All that we discover in God will teach us to place the arms of our trust in him alone. Our God is a safe place on which to lean. Mm. Put your trust in the Lord. Mm. That's so great from Thomas Lee, the Puritan, one of the selections in Voices from the Past, a great uh, devotional for you to have if you enjoy the uh, writings of some of the Puritans. Let me pray for us today. Lord, I pray that you would turn our hearts to you. Lord, that in you we would indeed place our trust, our hope, our confidence. Um, Lord, that <clears throat> we would recognize the beauty of your faithfulness to us over and over and over and over and over again. You've proven yourself faithful. You, almighty God, who have invited us to call you Abba, 
our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, in my life, in the life of my friends, just as it is in heaven, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Have a great day. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Keggy.